we've finished working on my 987 Cayman S. I'm Raf, and as promised, I'm going to be walking you through the fabrication and problems that I had with this build. Porsche AccuSump install. Just a Google search for that pops that image up right away. This is the, I knew I didn't want to put it in the, in the cabin, but I didn't really think, hadn't really contemplated exactly where. But seeing this image of the radiator uh, lines in the center tunnel and with an AccuSump in there, that got me going. Once I found out that that was a 996, you know, I had to obviously get inside. Mike came in and make sure that the, the tunnel looked the same, which it does. And if you scroll to that, I had it open there again, but it's the three quart AccuSump. And someone did their, listed their stuff, Rob Vien. I don't know where you got it from, but I, I applaud your, your write up on it and showing us those pictures. Anyway, on to what I ended up building. That's what his looked like. A 10 foot uh, box, a box of 10 feet of uh, AN hose and a 45 degree hose end. I would suggest getting three of those or maybe one of those and, a, and two females. And then definitely uh, the best I forget if it was two or three, but these hose separators definitely come in handy. This is the EPC valve I ended up using, the 20 to 25 PSI. The Wix remote filter adapter, 24766. And these are the deep impact sockets. Uh, I also had a 26 millimeter. I forget if I used it or not, but 32 and a little bit and 36. To build the AN hoses, you're gonna need some big ass wrenches. Uh, most of my tools are metric, so I went with a 21, a 22, a 24, a 25, and a 26. Uh, if you have the American tools that match perfectly, even better. Uh, but definitely recommend having some spares. You, if you mess up a fitting, it's trash. So these are what's included with the kit. I have those as spares, a spare coupler, and then a 45, and the straight fitting. Uh, the hose that I use uh, is 10AN. The way you buy these, there's a great description of it. 10AN by half inch NPT. This is the, I got, obviously got these from Summit Racing. Last component you're going to need, a 20 to 25 PSI switch. This might have just been my bad luck, but uh, thanks to Canton Racing Products uh, and the dude here at this phone number, I definitely missed said that in the previous video, Canton Racing Products. But thank you for helping me out. You helped me diagnose it and sent out a new switch. It's loose and, oh, that's a good sign. This do just pop off and there's some flex to that so that's looking good. So it's using the 10 millimeter on the rear bracket. That's the engine back there. I spread them wide enough to get the accumulator in there. Let's go ahead and try it. Clear as this. It gives me one in, we'll go metric here, 33 millimeters. That's how high this has to be. So the 33 millimeter mark, draw a sharpie line. This one is the rear one. So this is what we're gonna want to have higher up. So I'm gonna give this one just the full size bar without shaving it down. That really doesn't matter since we said we're going full size. So what I'll, all I should measure is this. 25. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of stock. Let's go this way. 
far to 25. So this is the rear face, and we're going to be using a Dremel with a grinding wheel. Actually, after quite a bit of grinding, you get that shape, and the bolt just drops through. Now is uh, I test fitted this piece. That's the front. That's the rear, and it checked out. So I'm gonna weld that to that using this. I'm not the greatest welder in the world, but to hold 20 pounds, I can do it. Gonna try it this way. Got these both installed, both through drop downs. This eventually is gonna, gonna be installed like that, face down but up there. But for our layout purposes, we're gonna flip it. Call that dimension. So that's edge of the tab to the beginning of where its hole should start. That way you can tighten it up and it will be square. So tab length to hole to first edge of the hole is 10, 15, 16, 17. And we'll call it 20 mil on the other side. This baby's almost ready. Uh, right now, all I have to do is these uh, last add-on tabs. I just need to drill out the drill out the holes where they're going to attach to the factory frame. It's going to go in here. These factory hose braces. In order to do that, I'm going to all the fasteners back in and torque them to get the hoses in the correct positions because one of these you know flexing will affect the other I just can't wait for this sump to be the AccuSump to just hang there and be, you know, secured. Yeah, this is a uh, an E14. And then back here, these are just a pair of uh, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter nuts. The only thing I haven't clipped in is a little vacuum line because it's, you know, soft, flexible in comparison to these heavier hoses. That's in. Now, yeah, what I concluded was to get this with the sump attached, it's best to have everything bolted together outside of the car. And then just raise it into place and then bring the brackets up to it. Here I'm having the issue.
I'm gonna have to treat it like as if it were the true, the real insole. Okay, let's do that. If anybody's watching, you can see how not to do it. So, then off the back. Attach this to its two locations. Whew. That's it. So, end of the car, I noticed that you have to access the Schrader valve here to set your, your pre-charge pressure. You got a AccuGauge Checker Spare, which in essence is just a male to female extension for a Schrader valve. It's you know it's meant to be for a spare tire that you can't get to under the chassis. But for my purposes, since we're gonna be hiding this in the trans tunnel, that's what I'm calling it now. The transmission tunnel on my Cayman. I need to make sure that this is able to hold pressure. So, just the way AccuSump sent it out to me with uh, 40 pounds pre-charge to, you know, ensure it's airtight. I'm going to set this to 40 40 pounds. You know, while I'm at it, I'm going to see if the see what the pressure gauge on that is compared to this AccuTire. Thirty-two. That looks good. Yep. Nice thirty. This is a nice thirty. Anyway, I'm gonna pump this up to forty and leave it overnight, and we'll check on it in the morning. Spread this one down and move this one up. Okay. Not into here before. Same issue. Let's turn that down. Press up. No, let's go. Okay, we're still making it in. That's how you do it. Lay 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are in. Okay. Now we've just got to rotate the solenoid around. It might be okay. Be okay like that. Yay, interference. What definitely doesn't clear is the uh, the clamps up top. Um, they wouldn't clear on the side anyway. Um, my best shot is probably to cut off the the excess threads. Oh, I'm so happy this is finally going in. To take off the nut. Connect your uh, vacuum line. That I moved. I think it's a vent line for fuel. Anyway, put that on there. Oh no. Okay, not terrible. Just gotta move it back a little. Just slide this back. So that fits, but then the EPC valve is definitely not going to clear. Right now what I'm doing is laying out where to drill my holes for my remote mount filter. Uh, some of you may be asking, why don't you put it in the trunk like the kit's meant to be? I just don't like the idea of the oil filter being in the cabin with me. You know, worst case scenario, the car rolls or something. I'd rather all of the hot oil be outside the, the cabin. Transmission brace, that's the front of the car. This is the driver's side. You're gonna draw a, on the, the dot that's in the, there's two holes here. The one that's towards the front of the car, you're gonna take a line and bring it across. It's obviously already there. Take three millimeters from that forward, and this will be your alignment mark. Dead Sharpie, come on. Okay, that's good. You've got your the perpendicular line, and then the three millimeter line. Take your screws and back them out just so that they barely stick out. Once you've got that, well mine's already marked, but you'll get the idea. Press up so that they catch, and then slide over to your 3mm mark. So not the perpendicular, all the way to the 3mm, and that's your pilot hole that you can mark for the first hole. Got my hole marked now, got some metal drill bits. These are for, these are made of cobalt. They're specially made to drill into metal. I started small, it's a one eighth to you know, get an idea of it. Looks good, looks nice and lined up. Now I can give you guys a range rather than just a, a dead number. Okay. So according to that, you could be either three millimeters away or 
Yeah, we'll call that range uh, three to five millimeters. So from center line on that hole there, if you guys can even see that, yeah, you can. Okay, so from center line on that, draw a line down, and then you're gonna go somewhere between three and five millimeters to create the alignment mark. Once you have your alignment mark, back your screws off just a little, place down, bring the screws up to the edge, and then bring that edge to the alignment mark, and that's your hole. Got a, a 3 eighths cobalt drill bit. So, as for the question that I had of what to use if I had to make a bracket or not, but using that mount location, I was able to put the bolt in. It's an 8mm bolt with a nut simply to be a spacer. And then underneath, just that. Now you have a little bit of room to tighten it, so. Once all three of them are in there, I should be able to get a level mounting. The bracket. Just to make it easy to lay out the last couple holes. Like I said, I'm gonna angle it a little bit towards the It's the front of the car. It might not even be necessary, but well, let me see. If it's not gonna, if I'm still gonna hit flat spots, we'll go ahead and angle it a little. Yeah, that'll be good. So really, you guys can uh, crosshair it this way through this hole. Uh, center of the edge of that rail. I'll give you a good angle. So I center punched both of those to give them a pilot mark to get started. If you choose a different install location, just be mindful of uh, anything that might be behind what you're drilling into. This doesn't bite me in the ass. <laughs> Got this adapter, hopefully to get it on this time correctly. Um, I'm just gonna clock this upwards and see how that goes. It shouldn't interfere with anything. in with the check valve. Just gonna give it a quick tighten. Let's go see how this looks under the car. All right, my hunch was correct. This did not clear. That looked ridiculous, so I ended up going with this. On the location I have it, it does clear the, it's the sway bar. Anyway, coupler here, check valve, and you're gonna need to order one of these. At half inch NPT male to a, uh, we'll give it this 45 degree bend, and then a 10 AN hose fitting. Got pressure line here, return line, the adap adapter for the sender. I'm just gonna leave them loose for now. I'll tighten them once they're under the car. The other thing I did was I put a little Ziploc bag around the ends to, uh, Make it easy to, you know, feed them through the chassis without getting any debris in the lines. It definitely generated a little confusion for me. 
but now that it's sorted out, I can guide you guys through it. So, these are ins, these are outs, they got little arrows up top. This would be the return line. You can also take a look at them. This feeds to the outside of the filter, and then the contaminants get trapped, and then the center of the filter feeds back to the engine. So, just like the arrows point, this would come to the center, flow back to the engine. And that's where we're gonna have the uh, temperature sender. This is the one-way valve, so that when you lose oil pressure there at the oil pump, instead of the oil going back that way, it gets stopped here and gets forced this way and that way. So a minor bit of disaster. I cross-threaded one of the fittings. This one here. Anyway, I believe it might be trash. We'll see if I can salvage it by using adapters. I have some crappy news. This is the oil filter mount that the kit comes with. And I stripped out the what I thought were half-inch uh, MPTs. This is what the mount comes with. It's a metric something. And this is what the rest of the kit comes with. Anyway, that's stripped out. It's too late. But I was having issues with it anyway. It was, uh, like I said, it worked out for the best. I was able to hop online and order this. This is an oil filter mount by Wix. It's part number 24766. What's better about it is it's higher up, so the issues that I was having clearing the inner roll bar, uh, they're gone because this is a little bit higher and the points where this, the inlets and outlets, they're narrower. So you get better, easier clearance. The good thing is I can use this mount. Well, I can tell you about that other issue. I was trying to put this in the tunnel originally, just attached directly to the AccuSump. It doesn't work. Uh, there's not enough clearance for a couple of the pieces. Uh, I think it was mainly the pressure switch that was not clearing the tunnel. So, uh, just what, what, the same way I mounted the oil filter mount, I'm going to put the this plate on the other side, on the pa passenger side, and attach that. Up the mount for my EPC valve that came with the kit. Uh, I'm going to be welding these together into a little set of brackets that will attach here and attach to these uh, holes back there. Holding up the last uh, two pieces onto here. This is what the, the bottom of the frame looks like. you're going to need to get is a, uh, a drill bit and tap. This is a quarter inch by 20. Got that here and this is the measure bit. That and the uh, Allen key that matches the threads or the, the screw for the adapter. The oil filter adapter mount. So got no threads here, cutting them we have got one cut so far. What I'm doing is, uh, after you get the first one cut, you can mark the rest of your holes. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I just uh, I center punched it, and I'm now in the process of drilling it out. Holes drilled out. Now just to tap it. I just use a little water on them. Straight as you can. And we're cut. Yeah. 
it was a longer hole, I'd say you should use oil. And it's the same water I'm using to cool down the drill. Okay, that's good. And then hoping that this one still lines up. Yeah. So. Let's tighten these both down and then mark the last two holes. PC valve mount that's gonna line up there. Really, what I did is uh, marked a red dot there on the side. Same with this other side. And these are simply gonna go lined up to the edge, edge there, and then this outer edge on this side is simply gonna get lined up to that hole. So once you get everything lined up, mark your sharpie there. That's how it's gonna sit. Obviously this is upside down, but. Now I've got my 964ths to drill it out. And some water here to clear the bit off. Big hole time. So just using lighter pressure. We're through. Got a bolt passed through the top. Now just, all you do is square it up and, you know, pencil on in. I've actually already done it. This is a quarter inch. I seem to grab that as a, a good good standard uh, screw. I'm using M8s and quarter inch by 20. Yeah, through plastic you can drill pretty fast, but through uh, sheet metal, a little slower is better. This is pretty thin, so I didn't bother to cool down the bit. Wondering where exactly I'm drilling. Here's the exhaust manifold. There's the wheel, there's the support brace. And then this is the beginning of what I'm fabricating. longer screws for it, but it'll work. Little hole is done, now try them for the big one. Yeah, we're through. It's just fine. So, it there, and then rail comes along, not touching this plastic. There's enough space there. Me attempting to get this frame into the space under the car, and it did not work. We were uh, a little short of an inch uh, too high. Anyway, I'm going to be recreating it out of half inch uh, square steel and some stainless. I'll give you guys a gauge on that as soon as I measure it. Just picked it up. Uh, you're going to need to drill some drill bits, some hand files a angle grinder to clean up your shitty welds 
uh, a six inch uh, cutoff saw. Really any saw that can clear your stock will be enough. And then we've got some blueprints for you guys. I'll give you guys the link to it. Uh, you'll need a ruler, measuring supplies, whatever you, you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna be using digital calipers, a ruler, some measuring tape, and a pencil and a Sharpie. So in here we're gonna be doing, creating this. Let's get started. The tube is half inch by half inch with a wall thickness of 65 thousandths. And then the sheet metal I'm using, you can read is 1 16th or if you want to order it. So, let's call that 65 thousandths, same thing. Progress, got all the front supports, rear supports, bottom rails. I'm just gonna make the center connectors now. The center connectors, these are gonna be 11 sixteenths. Dial that up, line up your point, clamp down. This is the sheet metal for the tabs. So one and a half inch line laid out and then the first ones are one and five sixteenths. And the others are gonna be just simple one and a half. Well, let's cut those out and then I'll lay out the others. Those of you that don't have the luxury of a, a bench with a vise attached to it, this is what I'm using. Just a couple of jack stands and you place the metal on a, the part that creates a 90 degree support and go to town. So I've laid out the lines. This is one and a half inch down across and then the uh, label each section, you know, your fronts, your rear your tabs, and then your bottom tabs. Got the two top rails uh, lined up. Got the center. I'm calling this part TC, the top connector. Yeah, it's okay if those two pieces fall out. I believe this is what's gonna keep my, my frame square. Cut them on a couple squares there and bring them over.
both up the rear rear sections. Same procedure, just got the couple of square pieces uh, to support it on the same level. I'm welding in the, the stand-up supports. Just flipped it over and I'm holding them in place by hand and just tacking them in. Got the AccuSump in its brackets. Now, uh, of course you've got a little bit of play forward and backwards. So this is how I recommend that you guys set up your own. Uh, clamp it so that it's... There's these orange markers that you have to have the bands on. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, when you get the AccuSump, you'll see them. Once that's attached and the clamps are on the bands, that's the correct spacing for your holes. I recommend you have a piece of scrap metal to uh, use as a back plate, backing plate for the center punch. But this way you don't bend the tab in the uh, drilling process either. Now that you've got your hole centered, Repeat for all the, all of the uh, holes. I'm using a what is this thing? A one eighth, just like the uh, drilling of the uh, firewall. If you guys watched that video, same process. Keep the drill bit cool. Done with the one eighth. Now I'm going to use the three eighths to finish off the holes. Way too easy. Okay, so now that that's up there. Place the front holder, front bracket. I'm still debating whether or not to run the air, the air hose to adjust the pressure. I've already set the uh, pre the air charge preset it to uh, nine nine psi. Yeah, I'm just not sure how I'm you know going to experiment with the. Uh, this is a street driven car, you know, daily driven. I want to know if I should completely. You know, flip the switch off for the sump, the accu sump, the EPC valve to disable it. Or if I can use it and just leave it automatically on all the time and have the, the oil level naturally fluctuate with uh, the pressure. The rear uh, hose brace, hose bracket, whatever you call it. Remember that you've got this line of it, the line holder on this side. So this goes in first. We have to remember is you have to clear both these tabs under that. So between the plastic but above the below the plastic but above the metal. So 
snap one in. Okay. Put those in there. Top airline is, it's a vacuum line, really. I'm not sure if it's a vent liner, but the plastic line that's in there, make sure to snap it back into its holders before you tighten anything else down. Ah, oh, crap. Speaking of the. <laughs> I didn't do this one. Oh, there it is. Okay, never mind. All good. And we're good to tighten down. Yeah, this is how the bolt light holes ended up looking. How much use that is. Here it goes. Read it upside down, 18. And I'm using the, a 26 millimeter socket. neighbor in his Fiat. Okay, torque. Done. Spin a remote filter adapter. This one can spin around so you can adjust the, the clock position of it. Make sure to lubricate the O-rings on the inside as well as the top one. And one last check of the surface, nice and clean. That was torqued to 18 uh, foot pounds. All right, now I'm gonna adjust my clock position so that the lines hook up. So let me just do that. Questions for this tri uh, triangle frame. This is all made out of a half inch tube stock or square tube. This is something useful for you guys. These are an inch. This I went with inches for this. So a half inch. Okay, we'll start with the this piece. So two tubes stacked on top, one on the back. The length of these guys is three and I'll give it to you. give you guys a whole number. So 11 sixteenths, three and five eighths, three and five eighths, we'll call it. Three and five eighths by, so just three of those tubes stacked on each other. Three and 15 sixteenths, there's a little bit of play. It's a little less than that, but then these are cut at a 45, so I'll give you guys the longest length in the back. 3 and 13 sixteenths. And then... 2 and 15 sixteenths. Well, that's it. Weld those as close as they can in there. One and fifteen thirty seconds. That's a weird ass number. Here. One and seven sixteenths. Yeah, and one and seven sixteenths. So you guys can see it's at forty five. Okay. Give you guys was the total length of uh, the top rails. So we concluded that this was. Half inch tube and the rear is square, square. So it's one inch plus. One and three sixteenths. Yeah, one and three sixteenths for the rear riser. 
on the width. Twenty three thirty seconds on the full width four and fifteen sixty fourths on each one one and five sixteenths from the rear. One, two and nine thirty seconds. Now the front risers. Same thing, one and three sixteenths. Same thing for the width. One and five sixteenths. And then distance. Three and Eleven sixteenths, as I'll call it. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters is this length. That's it, really. Then up here, we kept these. I'm pretty sure. Eleven sixteenths from end. And one and eleven sixteenths from end. On the rear, they're stuck together. And then from the end, seven sixteenths. Double check and then it looks lined up. Yep. Learned a new trick. Felt like a. So I figured out this is a. a powered, kind of like a rivet gun. I didn't know that. 